In this video, we're going to talk about how to do implicit differentiation. So let's say if you have this function x cubed plus, let's say y cubed is equal to 8. And you want to find uh, dy dx at, let's say, you want to just find dy dx. So what we need to do is differentiate both sides with respect to x. So that's d over dx. The derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. And the derivative of y to the third is 3y squared times dy dx. For these kinds of problems, anytime you differentiate a y value, add dy dx to it. The derivative of a constant like 8 is 0. So now we got to put dy dx. we got to get it by itself. So if we move the 3x squared to the other side, here's what we now have. All we got to do now is divide both sides by 3y squared. And so in this particular case, dy dx is therefore equal to the 3's cancel. It's negative x squared over y squared. So that's how you can do it. But now let's try um, another example. So let's say if we have this function x squared plus 2xy plus y squared equals 5. And we want to find dy dx. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Let's differentiate x squared. The derivative of x squared is 2x. Now for this part right here, we have x and y combined. And whenever you see that, you need to use the product rule. So let's separate this function into two parts, 2x and times y. So to use the product rule, the gist of it is like this. You differentiate one part and then keep the other part the same. So we're going to differentiate the 2x part, which is going to become 2. We're going to keep y the same. Plus, we need to keep the first part the same now and then differentiate the second part. The derivative of y is 1. And any time you differentiate a y variable in, in relation to implicit differentiation, add dy dx to it. So here we have y squared next. And the derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dx. And the derivative of any constant is always 0. So now our goal right now is to isolate dy dx. So any variable that or any term that doesn't have a dy dx, we're going to move it to the right side. So what we now have on the left is 2x dy dx plus 2y dy dx is equal to negative 2x minus 2y. There's a lot of 2's here. You know what? Let's divide everything by 2. So this will disappear, that and that. All of them will disappear. Our next step, we're going to factor out dy dx. So we're left with x plus y is equal to negative x minus y, which we're going to factor out negative 1, and that's x plus y. So now we're going to divide both sides by x plus y. So notice that the x plus y's cancel. So for this particular problem, dy dx is just equal to negative 1. Let's try another problem for the sake of practice. So let's say if you have 5xy minus y to the third is equal to 8. Now feel free to pause the video, give this problem a shot, and find dy dx. So let's use the product rule here. So the first part is going to be 5x, the second part is y. The derivative of 5x is simply 5, and then times the second part, y. And the derivative we're going to, now we're going to keep the first part the same, 5x, and then we're going to differentiate y, which is 1, times dy dx. The derivative of y to the third is 3y squared dy dx, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So any term that doesn't have a dy dx, let's move it to the other side. So that's the 5y. We're going to move it over here. So now we have 5x dy dx minus 3y squared dy dx is equal to negative 5y. Whenever you move a term from one side to another, it changes from positive to negative or vice versa. Our next step is to factor out the GCF. 
Well, not really the GCF, but just dy dx. We need to isolate it. So we have dy dx times 5x minus 3y squared equals negative 5y. So our last step is to get dy dx by itself by dividing both sides by 5x minus 3y squared. And so now we have our answer. dy dx is equal to negative 5y over 5x minus 3y squared. So that's it for that problem. But there's more to talk about. So let's say if you have this problem. Let's say tangent xy is equal to 7. Go ahead and find uh, dy dx for this problem. The derivative of tangent is secant squared. And we got to keep the inside the same. The angle for tangent was xy, so therefore the angle for secant squared has to be xy. But now we got to differentiate the inside part according to the rules of the chain rule. So let's use the product rule. The derivative of x is 1. Keep the second part the same. The derivative of y is 1 times dy dx, but we got to keep the first part the same, which is the x. And the derivative of a constant is 0. Now for this problem, to get dy dx by itself, the first thing we need to do is distribute this term secant squared to y and to x dy dx. So secant squared times y is simply y secant squared xy. And for the next term, this times secant squared is just x dy dx times secant squared xy. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to take this term which doesn't have a dy dx and we're going to move it to this side. So x dy dx secant squared xy is equal to negative y secant squared xy. You know, I realized this probably was an easy way of doing this, which I'm going to show you after this part. Let's divide both sides by x secant squared. Notice that the secant squareds cancel. And in the end, dy dx is basically negative y over x. So, but let me show you the other way we can have done this. So we had secant squared xy times, I believe it was y plus x dy dx is equal to 0. What we could have done at this point is just at this, right here, divide both sides by secant squared. So these cancel. And you get y plus x dy dx is equal to 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. And yeah, it's going to be much easier solving it like this. So now let's move y to the other side. And then let's divide both sides by x. So therefore, dy dx is equal to negative y over x. So there's more than one way of uh, solving a problem. Let's try another one. Let's say if 36 is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. How would you find the answer for this one? Now you can go ahead and take the derivative at this point, but Personally, I believe it's much easier if you simplify it or adjust it. Let's square both sides. We really don't need to find out what 36 squared is. We're just going to write it as 36 squared because when we take the derivative, it's still going to be a constant and it's going to become 0. However, this part is very useful. When you square a square root, the radical disappears and it makes it a lot easier to find the derivative. So now let's differentiate both sides with respect to x. The derivative of 36 squared, which we already said was a constant, is 0. The derivative of x squared is 2x, and for y squared, it's 2y times dy over dx. 
So let's move the 2x to this side. It's going to become negative 2x. And then let's divide both sides by 2y. So the 2's cancel. So therefore, dy over dx is thus equal to negative x over y, at least for this particular example. And let's say, though, we have to find a second derivative. So we have this equation, dy dx is equal to negative x over y. Whenever you want to find a second derivative, and since we have a fraction, we need to use the quotient rule, which is vu prime minus uv prime over v squared. u is basically the top part, which is negative x. u prime, actually let me change the color. So u is negative x, u prime is the derivative of negative x, which is negative 1. Uh, v is the bottom part, which is y. And v prime is the derivative of y, which is 1 times dy dx. So let's use the formula. So d squared y over dx squared, the second derivative, is equal to v, which is y. times u prime, which is negative 1, minus u, which is negative x, times v prime, which is just dy over dx. Okay, so, and v squared is simply y squared. Notice that we have a dy dx here. What we need to do is take this term and plug it in for dy dx. So we have negative y plus x times negative x over y times y squared. Now what we're going to do is multiply top and bottom by y, just to get rid of this uh, mini fraction. So negative y times y, let's see if I can fit that here, negative y squared. And the y's cancel here, so we get negative x squared over whatever you do to the top, you have to do to the bottom. So you got to multiply top and bottom by y. So over y cubed. That's the second derivative for this function. That's how you could find it. So that's it for this video. Um, hopefully this gave you a more or better insight on how to find uh, the derivative using implicit differentiation.